Hi Adam, thanks for your purchase on your new 8MCR. We'll do a quick walk around for you and, and show you all the attachments and the machine and the basics. So I'll start on the dipper stick. So this is the main auxiliary circuit. You use this for your hydraulic attachments such as the uh, grab and the auger drive, etc. So you plug one on this side, one on the other side. Uh, we'll show the other side in a sec. This is the hydraulic hitch. And on here, you've got the detachable tilt hitch. So there's a hydraulic hitch on the bottom and then a hydraulic hitch on the bottom. I'll show you that as well. Um, so to connect the detachable hitch, you pick it up and then you get the Stucci multi-coupler block. And it's really simple. You just pull this lever up, comes down. This is a little protective cover. And you just do the same thing. So you pretend this was the block off the hitch. You put this in, lift this little lever up and click it on, really simple. On here, you need to select which hitch you wanna run. So top, this way, tilt towards the bottom. So when you're using the top hitch, push this up and the top will undo. And if you're using the tilt, you just turn that down towards tilt. And then that hitch won't move, but the hitch on the tilt hitch will move. So that's quite simple. We've got the pallet forks, the four in one bucket. You've got your 350 bucket. 450, there's the big mud bucket. You've got a 600 auger, and then that's the 300 auger. That's the auger head bracket, and then that's the auger drive itself. And this is the detachable tilt hitch. So this is the, the other side the, of the Stucci multi-coupler. And then this is the grab. So that's the Inter Macatolo TG25, five finger grab head plates bolted on and hoses. So hoses just come out and plug into the main auxiliary. So coming onto this side, this is the other side of the auxiliary. So that's the auxiliary 1B and that's a case train line. So you use this if you're running like a skid steer bucket, sorry, a skid steer attachment that needs a case train or even a, say an excavator mulcher. And then coming around, we've got the emergency stop here. And the battery isolator, and that's the starter motor isolator. Battery is in here. And you've got coolant, radiator. That's the hydraulic fan that uh, spins the radiator. If it's hotter, this fan will spin faster. Um, you've got two grease points here, so that's for your slew ring. So make sure they get greased. So we've got fuel lift pump here. I have had a couple of these wiggle off before and it, it won't let you start the machine because it can't get fuel pressure. So we're attaching them better now. Um, so that's just something, if it doesn't start, just check them, but uh, it, they shouldn't come off now. They've got a new way of attaching this harness, which is improved. So you've got fuel filters. There's two of them. Make sure you use genuine fuel filters. Some aftermarket fuel filters have a poor micron rating and it lets stuff through to the uh, fuel lift pump. Sorry, the high pressure pump, uh, you don't want that. So uh, don't use the cheap or aftermarket fuel filters. It's not a sales pitch. Um, I have had a couple machines where they've been using aftermarket, I think Wix, I can't remember the brand, but um, yeah, it wasn't up to scratch and some stuff's got through. So we recommend, of course, genuine filters for a good reason these days. Um, and then you've got alternator there, engine oil filter, engine oil dipstick and air filters over there. Work lights on top of the cab. And then if I come around this side, there's a flashing light inside the box. So that goes on there. You got the rear view camera up there, rear work light. So in the cab, we've got your emergency stop button, UHF, quick information sheet. So that's quite handy. Um, it, we can show you what filters you need when. Uh, check operator's manual for all your servicing requirements, of course, um, and then engine oil, etc., etc., volumes, everything you need. That's your radio. There's a cigarette lighter point back there. And then I'll send you the link for the video for the for the basic controls. Um, that'll show all of that. But this shows you anything special on your machine. Okay, that's it. So do another quick little walk around.
tracks. Um, you got The tracks will stretch in being new. Uh, there's a gauge up in the cab there. It looks like this little thing here. So put the gauge in between the roller and where it runs on the track. Um, and you need to adjust that daily to start with, um, if not twice daily for the first few days as the track beds in. Um, but don't over tension it. So you got to run it at the right tension. If you over tension it, um, you can have premature wear on the rollers, idlers and tracks. So run it as loose as you can without it falling off, of course. And if you follow this gauge um, and it shows you this in the operator's manual as well, um, it'll be good. So for the first, say, 50 hours, the, the tracks will be bedding in. Um, after that, um, they won't need adjusting very often. To adjust the track tension, you've just got the same old as, as most machines grease cylinder there so use a grease gun um, and you can pump the tension up very important to follow this and not over tension the tracks okay mate thank you very much